Hey everyone, this is Alex Orchias from Aeon Prestige Media, and in this video, I'll be reviewing the Rokinon 35mm f1.4 FE Mark II lens for the Sony mirrorless camera system. First off, I'd like to thank Rokinon for lending me this lens for this review. I've had a ton of fun with this one because 35mm is actually one of my favorite focal lengths. I love this focal length because it's easy to do everything with it, from street photography to portraits and product shots to food photography. I think it's a great all-around lens to have in your bag since you can do so much with it. Since I'm someone who is constantly traveling and going out to eat at different restaurants with variable lighting conditions, this 35mm f1.4 is an extremely versatile lens to have on my Sony a7 IV. So let's start with the specs. This lens is a 35mm f1.4 to f16 Sony FE lens. It has a 65.5 degree angle of view on full frame, 0.18x magnification, a minimum focus distance of 11.42 inches, and it has nine rounded aperture blades. It's weather sealed, has a filter size of 67 millimeters, weighs 659 grams, and is a total of 4.5 inches long. It includes a pedal-shaped lens hood and a lens pouch in the packaging. Unfortunately, it does not have image stabilization, so again, you'll have to rely on the Sony 5-axis internal if you have shaky hands like me. Just like the Rokinon 50mm f1.4 Mark II, this 35mm also has an M1 and M2 switch to make the focus ring either control focus or make the focus ring work as the aperture ring to adjust the f-stop. It also includes the focus hold button on the lens as well. Here's some of the content that I've created with this 35mm f1.4 Beast.
As I said earlier, I love the 35 millimeter focal length for all types of shooting. You can do so much with this focal length and have your shots look very natural, especially on a full frame camera, which is what I was testing it on. The autofocus performed very well when shooting both photo and video. Eye autofocus has always been on point as I tested it as well. Most of my test shots were incredibly sharp, even at f1.4, and due to the low aperture, it creates beautiful bokeh in the frame behind the subject. This new version has greatly reduced focus breathing, so it's a pretty reliable video lens as well. The one thing I will say is that I did notice a bit of chromatic aberration when shooting wide open at f1.4. This was an issue with the 50mm, but not a total deal breaker since you can fix it relatively easily in post. Other than this small issue, I really enjoy this lens and recommend you get one for yourself if you're in the market for a 35mm for your current setup. You can purchase this online today for $599. I think this price point is great compared to the other competitors, which sell for around $800. I have heard that people have had autofocus issues with the combination of this lens with the Sony a7 III when shooting video. It never happened to me on my a7 IV, but I'm just throwing it out there so you can do your research before you purchase it. Rokanon, thanks again for allowing me to use your lens to create this video. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more filmmaking, photography, and travel content. Thanks for watching.